Our next guest suggests the gains may be in for the year. Mike Wilson is the chief U.S. equity strategist at Morgan Stanley. Mike, great to see you. Thanks, Melissa. Good to see you. Just prior to coming to you, besides talking about Michaels and crafting, <laughs> we were talking about inflation, and Karen was pointing out the backwardation that was happening in many commodity markets. I'm, I'm wondering what, what you think about inflation, how you think about it, and whether this is going to be what prevents equities from going higher. Yeah, I mean, look, I think, I mean, this has been a big part of our view, really going back to last April. Uh, I think people thought we were nuts to, to talk about inflation back then. But, you know, we could see the writing on the wall. We were going to have this incredible stimulus. Uh, we were going to shut down the economy. And then, of course, ultimately, when you try to reverse all that, open up the economy, you're going to have, you know, you're going to have cost pressures. And uh, obviously, it's shown up in commodities already. It's shown up in a lot of the uh, pro-cyclical parts of the market, which we've been overweight. And it's, it's really, you know, worked pretty well. And the one outlier has been rates. I mean, and we know why. I mean, rates have been suppressed by the Fed. And I don't doubt that the Fed is committed here. I don't expect them to raise rates or start tapering anytime soon. But I think what people fail to realize is that the markets move ahead of the Fed. The Fed does not lead the markets. And the markets are just moving ahead because the evidence is overwhelming now that the economy is improving. The vaccines are working really, really well, and we're seeing a you know a crash basically in case counts and hospitalizations, arguing that we're going to reopen sooner, and now we're going to do another trillion dollar plus stimulus. So, so the bond market is just saying, look, we're not waiting for the Fed. We're gonna we're gonna move, and so I think this is all good. It supports the recovery story, but it is going to suppress valuations, and that's been our call for this year, which is why we do think at the index level, the S and P is you know kind of tired. I mean, thirty nine hundred is pretty full, even as, as we go out to the end of the year. But there's a lot of great stocks still, right? It's still a bull market. It's just a bull market of stocks, not a stock market, right? Hey, Mike, I've got a question. Uh, we were on together and we talked about the proclivity of markets to come down when rates rose about 1% from wherever they are. That was the first risk event we've seen in over four months uh, that actually brought equities down in a meaningful way in consecutive days. And there was not a follow through. The brining that came in today was extremely aggressive. Do you think that this incredible bull energy is gonna continue uh, as rates come up, as inflation is on threat? And uh, where do you see the downside in terms of the next equity pressure? It wasn't this one last week as of, as of today. Well, no, I mean, I think rates is the first uh, issue that the market's dealing with. By the way, once again, that's a, that's a constructive development. It means the economy is improving, earnings are, are going to be great about we, we know that from seeing the fourth quarter results so the, the market can survive a rate increase that's you know that's not our call our call though however is there are parts of the market that cannot survive that right some of these unprofitable you know companies that are trading at ridiculous multiples th those are going to continue to be un under pressure as rates come down one other thing though that we may need to start to consider in the short term at least for the next quarter or so is that some of these cost pressures are going to feed through to margins so Obviously, operating margins have surprised on the upside as the, you know as things kind of recovered. But if the costs start to work their way into the supply chains, then we may see a temporary you know pause in the revisions to the upside. That the, the margins may actually be a short-term issue. I, I don't see that yet, but that's something we're watching. I think as we go into the guidance you know period of you know kind of pre you know pre earnings, we'll see if do, do numbers start coming down on concerns that maybe there's going to be some cost pressures. But either way, we're going to survive this. It's, it's, it's a natural consolidation. And it, once again, it's about stock picking now. We want to find stocks that can that can do well in this kind of an environment. There's, and there's a lot of them. Mike, it's Karen. Thanks for being on. So when you talk about stock picking, giving what you think about multiples, I know you don't love to talk about individual stocks, but in, are you looking then for financials or sectors that have much lower PEs than the market? If not financials, what other areas? Yeah, we're looking for stocks that have leverage to higher rates and higher inflation. So those obvious ones would be commodity oriented sectors and, and obviously the banks. But also there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of stocks in other sectors that are, you know, perhaps going to benefit from the reopening. So we put a note out today just talking about the tech sector in general. We're neutral on the sector, but there's a lot of stocks that we like within that. You know, two stocks I'll just talk about briefly were T-Mobile and also Sensata, a semiconductor company that's very levered to you know, the automobile industry and also the EV play. So you know there are there are gonna, there are very very there are a lot of stocks that are going to benefit from the reopening and also individual product cycles or individual circumstances that can allow those stocks to do very very well in an expanding economy and those are two. You know, Mike, it's so unusual to hear stock picks from you. We, we usually come, we have you on, and the most granular you get is the name sectors. So, 
I'm, I'm just curious why the change, because several times during the interview today, you said it's a stock picker's market. Is this going to be sort of more what we see Mike Wilson do when he comes and talks to the public? Well, yeah, we, we try to do this all the time, Melissa. You know, we don't necessarily get credit for it. We do have a focus list that we publish every week, and it's done really, really well. It's up 45% better than the S&P over the last 12 months, you know, by picking stocks. And, and that's, in a, you know, it was a, a market where everything was kind of going up. But I do think that, you know, performing this year is going to be much more dependent on alpha than just data. And, and you know, we're, yeah, we are going to continue to try and highlight those individual securities for, for investors going forward, for sure. Mike, great to speak with you. See you soon. Thank you. Mike Wilson, okay. Morgan Stanley. Guy Adami, what have you to say about what Mike said or about his stock picks? Mike Wilson's, I mean, we've had him on for years. He's fantastic. And I think his bull case scenario in the S&P, I want to say it's 4,400 or so. I think his base case, or worst case, is 33. And we're probably right in the middle in terms of what he thinks. And he, all the arguments he makes are spot on. My concern is the leadership that's gotten the S&P here is going to take a back seat, but they were such an out, um, out disproportion of the S&P that if they were to sell off, it's going to be hard for the S&P to hold up. Um, I do think inflation is here, but to his point, we've pointed out other names as well. Look at Caterpillar today. Look at some of these food stocks like old school fast money, Bungie and Archer Daniels Midland. Those all suggestive <laughs> of the reopening trade and inflation being here, and I think they'll continue to work. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.